and welcome to my channel so in this video i'm going to try to solve this problem and also do some lab coding work at the same time i'm going to try to follow the general steps we should follow in the coding interview so uh, before we start the coding question uh, i would really appreciate that if you can help us grow this channel so let's get started first of all let's uh, first read through this problem so given an array of points where points i is represented by x i and y i representing a point on the x y plane which is a 2d plane so return the maximum number of points that lie on the same straight line so uh, let's take a look at this example we have the three points so we are going to return three because uh, there are uh, three three points lying on the same uh, on the same line for this example and for example two there are six uh, points and the maximum number of the points lying on the same line is uh, those four points so we are just going to return four so let's see the constraints it says the points uh, we have uh, between one to three hundred points and each point is represented by x and y and the x i and y is within the range of minus 10k to positive 10k and all the points are unique so it says all the points are unique so we don't need to actually worry about the same points something like that so having said that um, i think not too much to think about the ambiguous part uh, and too much room to think about edge case because it says that the points is uh, so we are we are going to have more than more or equal to one point and also all the points are unique so it's pretty uh, clear for our question so the next part is uh, let's think about how to solve this problem so how are we going to solve this problem I think what we are going to do is uh, we can have a for loop within another for loop it's like four layer of the for loop uh, so we iterate through the points so it's something like uh, p uh, let's say just a pi is from zero to uh, to let's say that there are n points and then uh, we are going to have another thing which is pj from pi plus 1 to n so it's something like that so we are going to uh, have two layer the for loop enumerate any pair of the points and then try to compute the slope uh, of the points so in here we are going to have a map so the map is essentially keeping the slope and the corresponding uh, count so we are going to have the slope and the corresponding count so when you try to compute uh, pi, when you try to do the computation on pi and pj, we just try to compute the slope on top of it. So it's something like for each of the uh, point pi, we are going to keep a map. Uh, the key of the map is going to be the slope, and the the value of the map is going to be how many, uh, how many, how many uh, points uh, that connect with pi that has the same slope. So in this case, uh, what we are going to have is uh, we are going to have uh, like for each of the point, we are going to have the number of the points on the same on the same line, and then we are going to have like a global uh, variable, let's say the maximum count, which is going to keep track of the maximum number of the points on the same line. So during the computation, we are going to update this value on the uh, on the fly as well. So in this case, uh, we are going to do like a two layer of the for loop. So essentially the runtime is something going to be O n square. Space wise, uh, we are going to keep a map. Uh, so let's say we have n, n points, then the space wise, it is going to be all of n as well. Uh, sorry, it is going to be all of n, but not as well. Uh, so runtime n square, so space wise, all of n. So having said that, I think we are pretty sure how to solve this problem let's do some coding work on this one so how did this, uh, let's do some coding work um, all right so first of all let's say if we have less than three points then we don't need to do any computation actually because like if you have two points uh, for sure they're going to be the same line 
so I will say if the point the lens is smaller than three, then you're just going to return this lens without doing any computation. Otherwise, it is our major logic. Uh, we are going to have a max, let's say max num points on same line. Starting from, let's say starting from two. Then we are going to enumerate all, the, all of the points. So let's say we just define uh, num points as a local variable. So we have first the points i starting from zero until the last one or actually the the one before the last uh, is just fine so i would say yeah so it would be something like this plus plus i and then you're going to have the j I plus one j is smaller than um, points the plus plus j so essentially, we don't need to, we don't need to, uh, we don't need to start j from zero. That's because we have already done the computation before, uh, so we don't need to re do the recomputation. So here, like he said, we are going to have a map. So we are going to have the slope. So just to represent the slope as a string, uh, because if you use double or whatever, it could cause potentially um, cause some some issue. So. Uh, I'll just uh, use x and y uh, representing the string using the string representation of the slope. So this one, this is so we, I will just name it as slope counts. Yep. So that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, let's do the computation on the slope. So let me define a helper function here. So private, um, this one is going to be the slope, uh, get slope. So we will have the P, P1, the P2. So this one, you're just going to do have a to-do item here. And currently, I just leave it as something empty. So I'm going to compute the slope and uh, put it into this map. Um, so let's see. It says that all the points are unique, so we don't need to worry about the same points here. Uh, if if it, if like not all the points are unique, we need we, we still need to do some special computation, special uh, processing for that one. So let's say get a slope. Uh, so slope, um, so the string the slope is going to be the slope on top of p1, p2, uh, sorry p uh, points i and points j. So if if the slope is already within this one, you're just going to update it. Otherwise, we uh, you're going to have put something new. Uh, but instead, what we are going to do is we are going to just put slope count put the slope count get or default the slope zero plus one. Then it should be the slope. Yep. And then I think pretty much it. And then. In the outside of here, you're going to go through all of the counts. So let's say string slope. You're just going to go through this uh, map and update the 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 maximum points on the same line. So this one is slope count dot key set. So max points is equal to max the max between this one and um, 
slope count dot get slope. And finally, we are just going to return the max num points on the same lines. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's finish this to do item. So for this guy slope, how are we going to do the computation? So let's say you're going to have the x as p1 0 minus p2 0. y is going to be p1 1 minus p2 1. And now, so 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 because uh, the GCD, the great greatest this divisor, a common divide, greatest common divisor between x and y can be non-zero, so can be or can be larger than one, so something like this. So let's give you an example. Let's say we have the x and as two and y as four. It is pretty much the equal something equal as x is as one and y as two. two. So we definitely want to uh, divide the x and y by the GCD of the both uh, things before combining it as a string. So we need to compute the GCD here. So let's say we have the GCD uh, define another helper function. Let's say it is called GCD. Just to give you like uh, x and it's, uh, y. So I think the GCD is. Um, oh, well, I'll just leave it to either to do item. So if so, here, like a, like um, p one, like uh, for example, the p one zero p two zero, it could be equal. Or the p10, p11, p21 could be zero. So that's that's something like uh, the two points are on the horizontal line or the vertical line. So in that case, the GCD is just going to return zero. So um, in that case, what we are going to do is um, x. Uh, so first of all, I need to get the GCD. So the GCD is equal to GCD on top of x and y. So x is equal to is gcd uh, equal to 0? If yes, then if the gcd is equal to 0, then you're just going to ha. So if gcd is equal to 0, well, if GCD is equal to zero, we are just going to divide it by. Okay, so I think I know it. We are just going to re have the x uh, divided by mass dot uh, max uh, x and y. Otherwise, we are going to have x divided by gcd. So if gcd is equal to 0, then it means it's either horizontal or vertical. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to have the, the divisor as equal to uh, the, 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 the we, we don't want to have this divided by 0. So we are going to have like uh, change it to be a non-zero stuff. Otherwise, we are just if GCD is not equal to zero, we are just going to divide by GCD. So similarly, we are going to do the same thing on top of y. So this one is gonna be yeah, and finally we are just going to return uh, the it could be like x and then y. Uh, or yeah, I'm just gonna add an underscore here. So, so that's pretty much it. So the rest of the thing is to how to compute the GCD. So I think the GCD. Uh, let's see. I kind of return. I think it's something like it is y is equal to zero. If yes, then it is going to be just x, otherwise it is going to be gcd on top of um, y and x divided
divided by y. Uh, so I, th I think it's something like this. Um, so let's give it a shot by running this through this piece of code. Maybe it's wrong, yeah. So it's one, one, two, two, and three, three. We have the output as two. Oh, so that's because I didn't actually add a, yes, I didn't actually add it, include the orange. So for example, let's say we have one, one as I, I encountered two, two, I didn't include the one, one as a count. So that's why, that's why I, I'm not uh, doing the correct thing. So let's see. So finally, we are just going to have the maximum, it should be like, have like a plus one here. All right, so let's run the other task cases. Okay, it seems like to be right. Let's do a submission here. All right, so it seems like everything works well. And that's it for this coding question. So if you have any question regarding the solution or regarding the coding work, feel free to leave some comments below. If you like this video, please help subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.